Okay, welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. This is a continuation from the previous video uh, because my video got cut off. And rather than just wrap up uh, what little I was going to do, we're going to expand it just a little bit to make things even more interesting. So where I left off, I believe um, I was uh, enabling the dynamics on the ball when we clicked the mouse button down. So I should have been, uh, if I remember correctly, finishing up this line of code right here. So, uh, like I said before, what that does is when we we had, if you remember, we had set the dynamics on the ball to be false when the ball was initialized because we didn't want it going anywhere until the mouse button was clicked. So now when the mouse button is clicked, we want to enable the dynamics and then we add the force so that the ball actually goes somewhere. Um, the problem we'll have with this, the way the code is right now, as if I click and let the ball go eventually it's going to come to a stop and then it's just going to sit there so it's not much of a game if you get one shot and then it just sits there and then nothing happens so let's make it go back to where it came from so that we can uh, get ready for another shot in order to do that, um, what I'd like to do is there's a couple of different ways to load objects into Shiva. Now, with the current scene that we have, what we did is we we actually put the objects into the scene before the game starts. And so if that's the case, then we're kind of stuck with whatever position we gave it when we were putting the scene together. You can also load things on in dynamically, in which case then you can set positions and whatnot. Um, because I want to make this a little, as robust as possible, um, I want to grab the position of the ball when it's first being loaded into the game so that I can return to that point. So that way if I move the ball in my scene later as I'm doing some design work, I don't have to come in and adjust the code. So in order to do that, let's um let's come into the ball on init function. We want to do this when the ball gets loaded. Let's add a few variables to capture um this information. Let's call this n for a number, and let's call this, um, uh, I don't know, start x. Okay, so number, initial value is 0. And let's go ahead and add the same thing for the, the, the y and the z. So start y, number, and finally, the z value, and start Z. Okay, so we have these three variables so that we can capture the, um, you know, I could have called it origin or something like that, but whatever, you know, just kind of depends on what you want to do. So let's fill those in. If we do that, it's, I'm sure you're getting uh, familiar with this. We call the this. We go to n start x, and then within parentheses, we're going to Put the code to grab the value. So let's go with um, object, and it's going to be a translation. So get translation. Even though when I think of a translation, I think of actually a phys you know, uh, like an act. You're you're doing some action. You're moving something, um, but it also refers to its current position. So get translation, and you can see that it returns an x, y, and z value. So um, as we look up at the top, so we may have to rethink the way we're doing this. Um, in fact, let's let's cut this code out. Let's move up to the line above it. Let's paste it in there, and instead we're going to create some local variables to be placeholders for just a moment. The nice thing about Lua is that uh, if you want to, you can do something like this, where you create three variables, and then um, this function is actually re returning the, the three variables all at once, and so they'll get assigned x to x, y to y, z to z. So it's kind of a nice little uh, shortcut. So we're getting the translation of the ball, so h ball, comma, the space, and once again, um, this is we tell it what which coordinate system we want to use and we're going to use the global coordinate system rather than the coordinate system that belongs to the local object. Okay, so that fills in our XYZ. 
So then we just come in here and say this dot n start x. We want it to be the value of x thing that we just pulled out. So let's do the same thing for for y. Oh, not f. I think I told you guys before I have a Dvorak keyboard, but my laptop is uh, QWERTY. So if I'm touch typing, I'm okay. But if I look down at my keys at all, uh, it ends up really messing me up. So that's why I'm not the greatest, well, I'm not the greatest typist to begin with, but it makes it even more difficult. Okay, so we've got the coordinates. We're storing them in these variables um, when we initialize the ball. That's going to make things easier for us when we want to return to that point later on. So let's do that in the, uh, we're going to create a new event handler because we want to check this every frame that the ball is in. We're going to check a few things here. So first thing is, um, we want to know if the ball is idle. And if so, we're going to do something. So we'll say if, uh, actually this is a dynamics because it refers to the dynamics of the object. So we use the dynamics class. Um, is idle, we want the reference to the object. So each ball. Okay, we're going to do a, some compound work here. So if the ball is idle, and the other thing we want to look at is um, think of, when we're thinking about when the ball is going to be idle, there's two points at which the ball will be idle, before it's launched and after it comes to rest. So it's not enough that we're doing checking to see if the ball is idle because when the ball is not, has not been launched yet, it's idle. And so we would be executing this code on every frame that's entered and so we don't necessarily want to do that it's kind of a waste I mean it's not going to cause any problems because it's con it's going to constantly reset it back to the position that it's currently at but it's a waste so let's also check whether or not the ball is in play so if the ball is idle and um, this dot be in play so this is the boolean that we referred to to find out if the ball is in play so if it's idle and it's in play then oh gosh then we want to return to the origin. So we do that by calling object uh, tra uh, translate to. So we're translating to a point. Um, the object that we want to translate is going to be the ball. We want to go to this start. You know what? I'm going to break this up on multiple lines. This is something I like to do to make things a little bit more readable. It's kind of just a matter of um, preference and style if you like doing it a different way then more power to you but I think this makes it a little bit more readable at least um, for me okay so we'll do the X Y and Z coordinates then it's asking for the space again which is you remember is a coordinate system so we're going to do the global and then finally a factor so this factor is the amount of time it's going to take to go over to that location. So I'm just going to set it to 1 so that it just pretty much goes there instantaneously. If you set it to 0, from my experience, it doesn't actually go. Um, so, I mean, I could go back and test it again, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened when I set this to 0. 0 time, it didn't actually move anywhere. Okay, so the object is moving off to the place that it started from. The other thing that I want to do is I want to tell the ball or set the um, in play to false because it's no longer in play once we return it to the origin. And I think that's all we need to do for now. Let's end that. Okay, let's just make sure. Okay, if it's uh, the ball is idle and it's in play, then we're going to translate back to the origin and we're going to make the ball in play false. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, the other thing we want to do, almost forgot, I knew I was forgetting something. We want to uh, disable the dynamics so that it doesn't immediately fall to the ground. So, enable dynamics, this, hball, false. Okay, control S to save, F7 to compile. We have no errors. Let's hope that that means that everything is going to work fine. Let's go to here. And let's load our scene. Uh-oh, we do have an error. 
So what does it say? Git translation doesn't like that. So let's go to our log and get a little more detail. So you'll notice here it says bad, bad argument type zero. That means that um, we gave it a bad, it's expecting something, we're giving it something else in position zero of the git translation function. If we click over to the code tab, it's going to highlight it for us. And so position zero is this um, H ball thing here. So let's figure out what's the problem here. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense because that should. Oh, you know what? Duh. Okay. So you can see here we are not actually filling H ball with anything until actually afterwards. So some of these things can be hard to catch sometimes. But um, basically, we were trying to get the translation of a null object, which obviously is not going to uh, return good results. Okay. Let's jump over here. Let's uh, clear the log in case we have any more errors. Go back to the scene. Hit play. Okay, we'll click our button. The ball rolls for a little bit. When it comes to rest, it should pop back up to the or the place where it started from. And it didn't. So uh, we got to figure out what the problem is. Okay, so let's go back over to the code. Uh, on inner frame. You know what, I think um, because I had been in the middle of doing other code, I forgot that when we click the button down, uh, well, for one thing, we need to check in here. Um, when the mouse button is down, the only time we want it to launch the ball is if the ball is not currently in play. So, sorry about that. I had done this in my last video, and this is the part that got caught off, and I forgot I hadn't done it. So, if not, this ball in play then so that means if it's not in play we're going to enable the dynamics we're going to add the force and we are going to change ball in play to true because it's now in play okay and control s f7 to save stop the scene go back Hit play, click the button. When it comes to rest, it goes back and it's ready to go. We'll click it again, it's gonna go again. Okay, so that's a little bit more than what I had wanted to do in the last video, um, but I figured, you know, let's add some extra stuff in here and, and get something going. Um, some good news is that I have the hosting space for the game and I have it all ready to go up. So I'm going to do maybe one or two more videos and then I'm going to post um, how to author, they call it authoring, but how to publish basically the game to uh, the internet so that other people can play it. So obviously there's not much to the game right now, but you guys will at least be able to go to a web page, see it in the in the browser window, um, be able to see that it that it does indeed work and see how easy it is to just export that out to a web page. Um, and as we make more feature enhancements and do some things, then um, you can go to the forums on my website and uh, register there and make some comments. Once again, um, if you get involved with the testing and there's some good feedback and um, you know, you kind of check in with me and, and let me know what you think, then your name will go in the credits on the game um, for the testing. So, uh, you know, not much of an incentive, um, but hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to be a part of a project and um, see your name on something. So, you know, hopefully you guys will participate and I'll get some good feedback. I want to hear from you. So anyways, um, that's it. That's all I have for right now and we'll see you next time. Bye.